uh, future of LFP batteries in the EV industry. We are doing a couple of classes for last year, and all of them are, as you already know, that it is about the lithium and battery, and we are almost covering for one year. So today I'll be talking about the LFP. Uh, uh, the LFP battery is a uh, very, uh, I mean, popular in the AV industry. So if you go to the next slide, you will see the uh, best uh, topics of the presentation today. So at first, I'll give you a brief introduction about the lithium and because I know you, some of you already know because of from my last class, but I know some of them are very new. So I'll give a very brief introduction, then available lithium and batteries in the market. I will show them. And then you will see uh, the comparison between MC and LFP. And then principle of operation uh, about the LFP because our topic is about LFP. So basic principle of operation will be doing the LFP battery. Then designing LFP materials, how with the design, plus how we can synthesize the material. And then there is uh, cells making, so show how the cells are made. Then testing of battery, how we can test the battery, or not parameters it is defined, uh, the, the uh, state of the battery. Safety threshold, what will be the safety threshold, then applied for LFP, what is the trending like plus LFP battery in the EV industry. So if you go to the next slide, we will see that uh, there is a, a picture. If you, if you go to the next slide, you will see uh, that uh, uh, there is an anode and cathode uh, on the right side of the picture, that slide, I mean. So in that one, if you see the cathode and anode, we are talking about today on the cathode, right side, which is on the right side of your screen. And in the middle, there is electrolyte and there is a separator, which is in the uh, gray uh, screen. This is the separator. And on the left side, there is anode. So when you charge the battery, the lithium comes into the anode and it stays here. And when you discharge the battery, the lithium goes back to the cathode. So is actually originated from cathode. That means in a lithium and battery, cathode is the lithium source. And we'll be talking about this cathode today, which is lithium iron phosphate. So you already know that when you charge the battery, it stores energy. So it shows how it actually stores the energy. And the lithium is actually going back and forth when you're charging and discharging the battery. This electrolyte is all over the anode and cathode. You are just looking that is in the middle. Actually, this is not like this. It is all around the anode and cathode. It's everywhere. It's just waiting all the portion of anode and cathode. And inside this separator, which is gray color as in a screen, lithium can only pass through this separator. This separator has very tiny holes, nanometer level holes so that only lithium ion can pass through it and go back and forth during charge and discharge. So this is very overall and normal concept that you should know about to uh, learn about uh, lithium and battery. And then if we, if we go to the next slide, you will see that uh, we have shown uh, one, uh, if, we, if we go to the next slide, yeah, yeah, I have shown the lithium and battery chemistries available in the market. As you can see, there are a lot of uh, types of cells. Some of them are LFP, some of, some of them are LTO, NMC. But normally this shape is actually uh, comes from the LFP cells. There is also uh, lithium nickel manganese cobalt, which is called NMC. NMC is currently very popular as well, along with the LFP. But there are some problems with the with the NMC. We will talk about it when we go to the comparison. In next is lithium nickel cobalt aluminum oxide, which is NCA. And then lithium manganese oxide. So it's called LMO as a uh, abbreviation. Lithium cobalt oxide LCO, lithium titanate oxide, and our LFP is here also. 
So these are the available chemistries in the market. If you go to the market and want to buy cells, you will see all of them. Mm, but you will most probably see NMC and LFP the most. The LTO, LMO, very few companies are making them. But NMC is very popular. Tesla is using them. All the um, high-end, I mean, uh, very renowned uh, EV manufacturer are using NMC right now. But they are all switching to LFP, even Tesla. Tesla is now funding on the LFP uh, facility and LFP uh, cell manufacturing facility in China and also in Germany. So this is very popular and this is getting getting some attention. And why it is getting the attention over NMC, you will see in the next slide. If you go to the next slide, we will uh, see that uh, there is a lithium nickel manganese cobalt, which is NMC. Uh, the details of NMC, how is the capacity, how it looks like. This right picture is showing you, this is the very um, I mean, general and popular form of NMC. NMC is mostly comes in the form of power cell, which has a length of 355 millimeter. This is just an one uh, type of cell. It can be many types. It can be circular, rectangular. It can be, um, I mean, uh, square. This is just one shape. This is called blade battery. It has very high length and width um, is uh, a little bit low, but length is very high. So this is power cell format of NMC. This is most popular. You can also see sometimes the uh, small pencil battery type cells uh, in, in the market, uh, like this, this type of cells. This is, this is an, a lithium and battery rechargeable, but very small. There are big size of these cells as well. So these are also called cylindrical cells. NMC comes into that format as well. So it has a uh, good capacity. 200 milliampere or milliampere hour per gram and it is relatively safe relatively safe means compared to the six chemistry that i have shown in the last it is relatively safe but we you will see that how safe it is than lfp this has a little bit good capacity 1000 to 2000 cycles total capacity but it it is not uh, the highest among the available chemistries, you will see. Uh, then NMC battery required more um, expensive and harmful cobalt and nickel. That is another problem. Nickel and cobalt, the cobalt is very expensive. Also, it's very toxic for the environment. Nickel is as well, not good for the environment. And those uh, mining is also very uh, problematic for the human uh, I mean, uh, health. So people are trying to things uh, find some alternative of that. And then uh, there is significant concern about the shortage, significant impact, both cost and availability. As you know, when you have a uh, low uh, supply chain of the cobalt, you will it will the price will go high. So that is another problem of the NMC. If you we go to the next slide, uh, you will see that uh, we have shown uh, the LFP. If you go to the next slide, you will see that uh, this is the LFP and this is the popular format of the LFP battery. So LFP batteries are uh, best and why best, we will discuss about it. Though you can tell, okay, it has low capacity than NMC, but capacity is not the only one that you can think about. It has low capacity, it is 160, but uh, you can increase it to 180, 190 even by modifying some of it, some of its chemistry internally, but average 160. But practically you can even get less. You can even get 120 from some of the same manufacturer. But yeah. theoretically it should be 160 if you have pure LFP. And it provides cleaner energy because LFP is using iron. Why we are calling greener and cleaner? Because iron is abundant in the, uh, world. We, we have a lot of irons and irons uh, composites available in the market which is very cheap. So you just can use them as iron source during the making of LFP 
and there is lithium if you have lithium salt iron salt and you have phosphoric acid phosphoric acid or any phosphate as a phosphate source you can make it you don't need the cobalt or nickel very high uh, costly material as well so this is uh, the reason as well why this is uh, cost is lower by the piece uh, cost to lo low because the material that is being used is not that much rare it is very available inside of it and uh, safer and uh, because of its thermal stability it has very high thermal stability as you can see here uh, in that the charging temperature is uh, 0 to 55 degrees Celsius. And for thermal runaway, you need to go almost 200 degrees Celsius. I will show you in the later slides that uh, the LFP can even go through nail penetration. If you just insert a nail inside the battery, just penetrating. Lithium are phosphate survive this, but NMC no. NMC really catch fire. You will see. The very other one very good uh, side as well, which is higher life cycle, which is five thousand to even ten thousand cycles. That means even ten to twenty years. I mean, ten years is very safe. You can use it very safely with photosynthesis. And 20 years, even if some of the manufacturers are claiming that it will last for 20 years. And why this is so, you'll see in the later slide, because you'll see the capacity. This is a cell that is manufactured by one company. It's 100 ampere hour, one cell. And it's 3.2 volt in the middle voltage. 3.65 volt dimension is given. And the shape is prismatic. So this is called prismatic, and this is very common for the LFP. It has also cylindrical cells uh, shape as well. It is the most common shape for the LFP. This is also a little bit more And uh, you can also tell uh, maybe this is a little bit heavier than NMC. And it is, but uh, why it is because the capacity. If you see, if you if you can remember last slide, there was 200 milliampere hour per gram for NMC capacity, now 160. That means if you have one gram of NMC, you can store 200 milliampere current inside it. But if you have one gram, you can get 160. So that makes it a little bit higher in size. But if you see the other sides, the cost, the safety, the life cycle, uh, the charging, discharging rate, and everything, you can find very good trade-off on that. So if we go to the next slide, then you will see that uh, there uh, is some, uh, if we go to the next slide, you will see that there is con comparison between NMC and LFP. Why this is, I chose these two, because these two is the most common in the market so nmc is um, commonly available in the market but lfp is taking over so nmc lfp is uh, getting more uh, preference and more popularity than nmc and this is why it's like that as you can see the life span and safety is very high in the lfp but in the nmc the specific energy the safety is not specific energy is very good but safety is not that performance is a little bit life span is also not that much good cost is higher but uh, for the cost of lfp uh, this is also comparable then the maximum charge and discharge as you can see at nmc you can charge only in 2c that means you can charge the battery highest in 20 minutes 30 minutes but uh, sorry two hours but for lfp 10c means you can charge your battery in six minutes highest if your lfp can with this standard if the chemistry or electronics is shaped like this it has eight years of more than eight years to ten years uh i mean at least you, you can get this cycle but practically from nmc you can get 500 to 1000 
access electrolyte. Electrolyte is also very high content. So as you can see, electrolyte and so is the most uh, used and mostly covered element in a battery. It's all for every battery. And uh, if you go break down the LP, you will see one percent phosphate. Five percent is iron, and just four percent is lithium. Actually, for this four percent, low in capacity, but uh, the other material is low cost. That's why you have good performance in terms of cost, and also the safety is very good for this. So, if we go to the next slide, you will see that uh, there is one uh, principle is shown about the internally working principle of LFP. I already shown you how the lithium and battery works generally. Uh, lithium and battery. Uh, so, you can see that uh, the Lithium insertion and extraction happens in multiple states. When you have lithium ion battery and uh, you have LFP as a cathode, which is here. So when you do not have the lithium in the LFP, this is just without lithium. Then lithium comes in, makes a, a composite, and then it becomes lithium iron phosphate like this. During the lithium extraction, it, it happens the exactly opposite. Lithium uh, iron phosphate gives away the lithium and then it becomes iron phosphate. So the lithium iron phosphate is, uh, uh, this material was uh, reported by Good Enough in 1997 and it is the most promising cathode for next generation and larger scale lithium and batteries. And there is a low toxicity, a theoretical capacity is 160 to 170. So it is very good to reversible electrochemical properties as well. As you can see, when the lithium goes in the anode, it makes a composite with the uh, carbon and become the lithium carbon, as you can see here. So if we go to the next slide, you will see that uh, there is one uh, structure, internal structure of LFP. What makes lithium iron phosphate very, you know, good? And why we are saying that it has very high uh, cycle number? This is the reason, as you can see here. Uh, the iron atom is here, blue. Oxygen is uh, uh, gray, uh, yellow one and the red uh, white is the lithium one so as you can see the structure is very uh, strong and, and lithium is just inside this um, tubular shapes so lithium goes into this one by one and it stays there so when lithium comes out the overall structure do not distorts so when lithium even go from here the structure remains like this there is no problem in the structure when it again comes inside it is just taking its place there is no other interference so it is very strong in the in terms of back and forth charge and discharge and that's what makes it a very strong candidate for the lithium uh, battery among the lithium and battery so it has a low electrical conductivity as the pure LFP, but if you coat carbon, if you mix carbon, you can overcome it. And if you dope a LFP with several uh, um, materials, which is suitable, you can get very, you can get a very good uh, capacity from it. So uh, this is uh, the thing that is happening inside the LFP, and that is what gives stability during the cycling, charging and discharging in the battery. So you, you can also understand from that, I, I believe easily, that this structure is not gonna distort because of the 3D shape. And as I, as I mentioned, the lithium is stored in one D tube, one by one, it goes one by one. So the path is 
defined so it, it just follows the path when the charging happens and then it's go back to the anode when discharging so charging and discharging happens like this and that's what uh, the structure gives its stability to the lfp so if you go to the next slide uh, you will see that uh, the if we go to the next slide, uh, I have shown the cycle life comparison of NMC and LFP and also N NCA. Uh, this is a, a cycle a, a life for different types of batteries. The blue one is LFP, the black one is NMC, and the red one is NCA. You can see different types of batteries. Then this is the cycle number. One manufacturer maybe they cycle it, and after three thousand cycle, they got this much capacity. And this is the number of uh, cycles. It, it reached 3,000, 3,000. So everybody reached around 3,000 for all the candidates. For example, cattle, for example, Tesla, the cell manufacturers, they took different cells and they cycle it. And after this number of cycle, it was uh, failing or uh, getting to a significant lower amount of capacity. But all of them were around 3,000. But if you see the NMC, the black one, you see that all of them are around 2000. The, all the cell manufacturer cells were around 2000 cycles. And then the red one, which is NCA, which is even lower, less than 1000. So that's why you can see that uh, clearly that LFP has very uh, good capacity, I mean, uh, to withstand the cycle ability. So, uh, why the NMC is, uh, is still in the market because it is uh, fully developed and commercially available, LFP is not. And as I've also mentioned that the LFP use cobalt and nickel, which is also costly. So large scale synthesis is also very good for NMC. The, but the cycle life comparison, as you can see clearly, is best for LFP. So if if I share my screen uh, again, so this is method of the LP. Uh, you can see here. So there are lots of synthesis method of LFP in which you can make. There is uh, one. A high pressure volumetric method. There is compressification method. There is solvent method. There is hydrothermal method, carbothermal method, energy ball mill method. So you can see the name ball mill. That means you mix two different, uh, or three different composites together in CMP. Then microsynthesis method also in the deposition. So in the static and spray deposition. Inflect mediated approach on the sonic spray, pyrolysis, freeze drying, synthetic method. So, all these are very much available. But I high pressure and switch method is a good method. It has very high yield. For switch method, is very popular and it's very easy to come. In the last skill also in the then solution method, solving method. Solution method is also a good technique. You can get a good techniques uh, for that. And uh, so if I just I mean, just uh, if some, some people are actually uh, telling that they are not getting the uh, Sorry, well. I lost my so connection. Will... Let me share the screen myself so you can go ahead. No, uh, yes, actually, uh, was it okay when I was presenting? When, when I was presenting, was it okay for you? I mean, the sound? Some of them are telling that the sound is not good. I find the PDF version. If I do the PDF version, it will be easier, I believe, for everybody to understand and to see. 
Yeah, I will I will I'll try sharing the PDF version, not the uh, slide version. Okay, it perfect. Sounds okay. Is it is yes, the sound right. is better? Yeah. Yeah, it seems so. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So this is the uh, this method. So the method. It is also very good method, and uh, you can. Uh, also understand from the name that it has a semi-solid format, semi-solid format, and uh, it has uh, you, you can just put all the complete format and then it takes a gel, solid type of format, and then you can get the electric from it. I don't know, method is very popular and also used very much for electric. We use this method for our synthesis. In our laboratory, of course, is also can be do, done in the laboratory. These are very common things that can be done in the laboratory. Carbon is also very good, and it is high pressure in this carbon that actually helps to reduce the solubility, uh, make it reality. Bormil is also very easy method because you need all the components lithium, iron, and phosphorus source together. You need to bond mill it with uh, bond milling uh, machine and you have all uh, bonds inside, and then you will just shake it. Then you will get that everything. It was very popular and it has the highest yield among these methods that I have shown here. It has the highest number of amount of yields. So there is one house uh, laser revolution and uh, laser like in your Sorry, Kamul, can you hear me? Yes. Uh, the students are saying that the sound is still not good. So what we can uh, do is to share the PDF in the chat and they go from 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 the slide that you are in and you don't need to share the screen. I think it is a more viable uh, way to keep the class going. Okay. Yeah, will, okay, uh, let me share the screen, uh, the video the file. Okay, so I'll, I'll send, send the screen, I mean, send the PDF to the chat so that everybody can see it. And... Uh, yeah. I just shared. Yeah. Is is it for every day when I'm sharing the problem is happening or this always? Like now? Is it good? Uh, to me, I, I hear you good because you are not sharing the screen. You can go ahead. Okay, so if you want to share or you can, or if not, I will share the screen. Okay. Let me share this then, so that everybody can go through the PDF and then um, use it for the purpose of asking questions. So this is the manufacturing method for the LP. As you can see, that there are three different steps of the manufacturing. So I will type video of, let me try with this, like this. So electrode manufacturing is also uh, the first step of the lithium iron phosphate making. Then the second is cell assembly method. Uh, so lithium, uh, Cell assembly, starting, building, packaging. These are the cell second uh, cell assembly. SS2 and SS3 is complete of formalizing and end of life testing. So, how the first system goes? Electrode manufacturing. Manufacturing. So, you can see that there is one which is mixing. So, that means you need to mix all the materials together. What is the material? You have, an, you have cathode. You have binders, 
you have uh, additive carbon and you have uh, the uh, solvent together. You need to mix it and make a slurry. You need to make a slurry because you need to coat it on a foil, thin foil, thin aluminum foil. So you can see the second is a strip is coating. And after this mixing and making a very good slurry, you can make a coating uh, with that. And then you need to dry it because if you coat it and do not dry it, you cannot use it because it will be washed out. And then you need to, uh, uh, there is one which is called solvent recovery as we are using mixing and solvent. So when you are drying the solvent evaporates. So we can reuse this solvent from the evaporation directly and then we can use it uh, again. So this is a very good system for the making of the LFP or any battery technology. If we can recover the solvent, it could be very beneficial, also very cost effective. Then in the next step, which is cell assembly, what you need, you need to do uh, this uh, dried foil, you need to calendar it. Calendar means you need to press it very well so that the materials, anode and cathode materials, um, become very uh, connected with the foil and then it become very solid there. So you, you can see there are two different roll dry uh, actual rotating and you put it inside as that's what is called calendaring. You need to cut it piece by piece because you need uh, multiple cells together and not all the anode should be connected together, all the cathode should be connected together and that is called slitting. So you have lots of different uh, foils and or cathode side by side but they are connected with common uh, point all the all of them connected together as anode and the second one is cathode then you have vacuum drying after this thing vacuum dry and then you have stacking is stacking is the cell uh, making procedure when you have the anode and cathode all together and you put them together and seal it in the power cell format or prismatic cell format that I have shown you previously. So there is, uh, after that you need to do welding, which is uh, after the stacking, you need to put it in, inside the case, which is prismatic or, or also the uh, pouch. In, in the pouch, you need to do ultrasonic welding. You do not, you cannot do the normal welding. But in the uh, prismatic cell, you can do arc welding. Arc welding is possible in the prismatic cell. But in the power cell, you need to do the uh, ultrasonic welding. Then there is an enclosing. You need to uh, enclose it with the electrolyte. That you can see in the right side, there is the injection of electrolyte. After enclosing and welding, there is a small hole. In that hole, you just inject your electrolyte inside and as you if you remember it i showed that electrolyte it actually uh, 20, uh, takes over 20 percent of the cell cell weight or cell material the value so the electrolyte amount is a little bit not that much low you need to put the electrolyte as much as necessary and you need to fill the whole area with the electrolyte then there is a formation scale in that formation scale you need to actually pre-charge it you need to charge the battery inside the cell manufacturing system. That means you need to charge it for one cycle charge and one cycle discharge to see if the battery is really working or not. Or also it's called formation because when you charge and discharge, there is one uh, layer form which is called SEI layer, solid electrolyte interface layer formation. This actually uh, protects the anode and cathode uh, from direct contact with the electrolyte and also uh, helps uh, to prevent corrosion during charging and discharge. So this pre-charging is necessary and this uh, how the formation happens, pre-charging, formation, and then degassing. Why degassing? Because when you charge and discharge, initially, because the electrolyte just getting uh, familiarized with the charge and discharge, it has formed, it formed some gas. We, which gas you need to release from the, and for this gas release there is a small hole uh, just below the battery 
and they open the hole for a few seconds and then they again close it. And after that, they store it. For storing an LFP cell, you need to keep the uh, battery uh, uh, capacity at least 70 to 80% if you want to store it for a long time. If you want to send it to somewhere else, you need to keep at least 60% of the um, total capacity, 60% charge should be. And that means before sending, you need to charge your battery 60% and then you need to send it. You cannot fully discharge it or you cannot fully charge it and send it to a longer distance. It is not good. It is not uh, safety. It, it is not good practice. Uh, there is uh, some uh, rules and regulation that is set by different types of testing authority, also uh, certification authority like UL in USA. There is one uh, um, uh, protocol, is I, IEC certification, ISO certifications. So those have some requirement. They mention that if you want to send the cells to a longer distance, you need to keep that because it keep uh, the battery safe. Also, the shipment becomes safe if you do this. So this is the cell manufacturing overall overview, what happens inside the cell manufacturing. For another cathode, everything is same. The same, all the process happens in cathode and anode. Then you have the cell, I mean, LFP testing, how you can test it. You can see that uh, in LFP testing, you, you need to charge it, which is here, the above one, and what is discharging. So in the charge and discharge, you need to see what is the capacity. So if you charge it, you will understand that what is the capacity. If it is around 160, this is good. You can say the battery is okay. You can pass it and call it chip passed. Then you need to do the uh, cycle number testing. That means the rate test. You need to do five cycles in my ten. That means ten hours slow charge, then little bit fast charge, then very fast charge, then little bit slow charge, and then again very slow charge. So this is how you see how your battery is performing in different charging and discharging rate. You need to do that, which is called rate test. So voltage profile is here, voltage is good, capacity is good, voltage is 3.5 and going to four, and then again from 3.5. This is good. Then the red is there. Then there is uh, uh, EIS test as well as you can see here. This is called EIS test. EIS test is very good to understand the internal resistance, also the charge transfer resistance, also the diffusion resistance. If you see, there is a semicircle and there is a straight line. The semicircle is actually signifying the charge transfer resistance and the straight line is actually signifying the uh, diffusion. So the more it is, uh, it has low slope with the x-axis, the better is the diffusion. So yeah, it's also very important test that your people of the cell manufacturer do in EIS testing. And there is CV testing, cyclic voltammetry. That means it goes through a uh, charge and discharge cycle, but in the CV uh, cyclic voltammetry fashion. That means you apply a small voltage and see the current, and then you go the vice versa for charge and discharge positive voltage and negative voltage, and see how the CV shapes. If the CV shape is very regular and there is no distortion, you can understand that your cell will perform better. These two tests is electrical water station test. And the other test you can do in the battery testing system. That's why I wrote BTS and electrochemical working station. These two tests need to be done in the electrochemical working station. The above three tests will be cycle life test. The voltage profile is here. This is cycle life test. You need to choose a, a regular, um, for example, one C rate, that is one hour charge and discharge rate. A cycle is 4,000, 200, 400, as much as you can, so that you can tell. Uh, the customer that your battery is good. So this is called cycle life test. This three test is done in the battery testing system. And these two needs the electrochemical work station. 
if we go to the next page, you will see that uh, LFP safety threshold is given. So a safety threshold is that when you charge the whole the whole this uh, the battery, you need to charge up to 4.2 uh, or 3.67, 3.65 or the LFP. For NC, you can go up to 4.2, but you cannot go beyond uh, 2.5 when you discharge it. So you can just charge your battery from 2.5 to uh, 4 volt and use it in, in this range. So all the battery manufacturer actually set this range and they give it mechanism inside from which you can see that you cannot even go or if you cannot even take the discharge from one cell below 2.5. That means when you, your voltage of your battery reaches 2.5 volt, it will shut down by itself. And when it is charging and charging and it reaches 4.2 for NNC and 3.65 for LFP, it will not take the charge anymore. That's what the cell manufacturer do inside their BMS, a battery with the BMS. They also do a very, uh, some of the cell goes through the destruction test, which is nail penetration test. And uh, some of them are going through heating test. They heat, heat up the battery inside the oven up to 200 degrees Celsius and see what happens in the battery. As you can see, this is actually a NNC nail penetration test and right here is LFP nail penetration test. As you can see, if we zoom it out, that this is an LFP cell. And after even nail penetrate from one side to another radially, there is no fire, even for a few minutes, even hours. But in NNC, you will see that if you go to this link, you will see. I will tell you to go to this link and see. I will not show it here in the YouTube that it immediately catch fires in NNC, immediately, just in two seconds. You have no time to escape. But for LFP, you have a lot of time, even no fire after even one hour, it will not catch into the fire. That's what makes this LFP safe because a lot of people are very concerned about the safety. They are telling that, okay, if we have uh, a battery, and in the middle of the street, it, it has some problem and catch on fire. It is very dangerous for everybody. Those who are using vehicle, EV, not using vehicle, EV vehicle. So that's why people are looking for the safe chemistry of the battery. And LFP is very safe in terms of those tests, as you can see. So if we go to the next phase, we have shown here electrolyte for LFP. Why electrolyte? When you talk about the safety, you need to think about the electrolyte because electrolyte is the one that become uh, problematic when you have uh, nail penetration or have accident and you have the shaking inside. So electrolyte become the most important thing to uh, you know uh, make you safe, keep you safe. That's why people are trying to understand how they can change the electrolyte. And the very good news is people are even trying to use aqueous electrolyte. That means water-based electrolytes. So water do not catch fire, because right now the electrolyte is using solvent, which is very highly flammable. So if you have this electrolyte and you have just a small spark or anything happens or any push up for the accident happens, you have boom, you have the problem in the vehicle. So if you have safe electrolyte, your battery is safe. But the thing is in NMC, you cannot do this electrolyte. Of course, of course electrolyte will destroy your battery. You cannot even run all cycles in NMC. But for LFP, people are even trying that. You can see there are a lot of research is going on. Some people do one third cycle, some people do 50 cycles. So they have uh, good results of that. Yeah, of course electrolyte. That is water-based electrolyte. So, you do not need even uh, the environment, uh, safe environment to make the battery. You can you, use, you can make the battery open here. Yeah. You do not need to make a dry room. Because right now the electrolyte needs to be in a moisture free room because the electrolyte catch fire immediately if it comes into the air moisture. So people are trying to do that. And some of them are very successful on that. And people are also working on that as well. So that is what also makes the LFP safe. 
safe electrolyte means safe battery. Then this is the current market trend of the LFP. Uh, this is summarized here. As you can see that uh, China is leading the LFP market very, you know, um, I mean, very expected, very much expected. And they have almost all of the cell manufacturer in LF China making LFP battery. And uh, LFP batteries are even very high capacity in, available in the market, which is 230 ampere hour in a cell. But in NMC LFP, you just see 50, 100. But in LFP, you can go very high capacity together and back together in a prismatic format. And in, in, in Canada, they are uh, even supplying to 30 ampere hour, which is 150 euro per cell. In Europe, they are leading the battery manufacturing. Uh, Germany has the largest LFP battery production facility in the European Union, whole European Union. Germany has the largest LFP facility. US is also focusing more about and they are now investing on LFP because it is safe. And for the safety issue, they are focusing on LFP. Even Tesla is switching to LFP. So you countries uh, uh, are not producing much LFP right now, but they are trying to do it as you see Germany and other taking initiative. So uh, right now you already know why LFP is the best for LFP, uh, EV, right, electric vehicle. But this is just summarized up that LFP can go, go, go through high discharge. Rate. That means you can discharge it very fast. If you have very high power requirement, you can take it from it, from LFP, but you cannot take it from the NMC. It has high efficiency, extreme temperature uses, you can go even 200, it will have no problem. And then lightweight. Lightweight is in comparison to others, not about exactly very lightweight. Uh, no active maintenance necessary because you do not need to use water like a, a lead acid battery. So zero memory effect, you do not have the memory for that. If you charge it for 20%, 50% keep it for one month and then again, again, Charge it to 100%, it will not remember the um, battery. So, we, we will go to the uh, uh, question and answer section right now. So, that's all for the presentation today.